Hi everybody, this is the Bible study for Sunday, April 26th. I've lost track of which month it is. Uh, we are learning about the Ascension today. It's entitled, An Ascending Truth. And the scripture we're going to be reading is Acts 1, 1 through 11, and Luke 24, 44 to 53. Our Bible truth is Jesus ascended to heaven. Our Bible verse is Jesus says, I am with you always. So even though we know that he ascended into heaven, we can remember that he is also still with us. And we're going to talk about how that's possible in our study today. Um, and our learner goal is I can explain why Jesus's ascension matters for both me and the life of the church. For our opening reflection, it says, think of a time when someone you know had to move away for a time to do important work. What sort of impact did that move have on people? And I've been thinking about this all day as I've been working on this. And um, the one I want to share, he didn't move away just for a time. He moved away kind of permanently. Um, but our campus pastor, my first two years of college, uh, was Pastor Coleman, and he was fantastic. And, um, you know, he was wanted everywhere because he was so good. Um, and he decided to take a call. Uh, he wasn't at, he didn't actually even move. He stayed right in the cities and went to a different church. Um, and it was really hard for all of us. But what was interesting about it is it was after my second year of college when I also was going away to do Youth Encounter for the year. And I just always remember the conversation we had. I, I had gone to him and said, you can't go. You can't go. We need you here. And he said, well, Carrie, if I don't, I will not go if you don't go. And so that was to me like that first time thinking about what a call really meant, because I truly felt called to go do the youth encounter thing. And I understood then how he felt called to go to this other congregation. What sort of impact did that move have? Uh, it was rough. It really changed the dynamic of our campus ministry. I was gone that one year um, and we didn't have a pastor that year as they looked for someone. And I think that that just had a huge effect. It also, um, the college changed to a university over that time and um, sports became more important and things. And it was just such a different college that I returned to. We got a great campus pastor when I got back, but it just was um, in that time, it was really changed. So think about someone um, and you can pause here and discuss it if you'd like. All right, our first scripture reading is from Acts 1, verses 1 through 5. It says, in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Um, before we go on to the reflection question, I just want to point out that this is Luke writing this. Um, when he says, I have dealt, that's Luke. He's the one who wrote Acts. And he's referring then back to the book of Luke, which we're going to go into um, in the second half of this study today, just to give you that information. So our question is, what do you suppose is the connection between Jesus' teaching of the kingdom, baptism, and the coming of the Holy Spirit? Take some time and discuss it if you'd like. Well, Jesus is going to the kingdom, right? Um, and eventually going to bring the kingdom back in, to us so that we can all... Uh, live in God's kingdom. And, and we might say right now that we do live in God's kingdom. We live in eternal life because we know Jesus. Um, baptism of the Holy Spirit is what's coming. Um, remember that John was, as he said, was just baptiz baptizing with water 
And Jesus is bringing the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is going to start in Pe on Pentecost, which is when the Holy Spirit is coming in the future. So Jesus is telling them this Holy Spirit is coming and then you're going to start to baptize people in a whole new way because they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through baptism. Acts 1, 6 to 11. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Our reflection question is, what words or phrases from this section help you understand how the borders of Christ's kingdom on earth will extend after he ascends? So, um... Jesus tells them here that they should wait in Jerusalem until they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. And then they're going to be Jesus's witnesses um, into all the world. My favorite part of this story is how the angels, the men standing there say, why are you standing here looking up into the sky? Basically, I love that part. Like, you've got a job to do. Get going. Um, it's not going to get done by you standing here. And I just, I love that because it is our job to not just spend this time in Bible study or in worship staring at Jesus, but then to also go and share his good news with others. Now we're going to get into the Luke account um, and do some comparing and contrasting of how the two accounts, even though they're written by the same person, hold some different information for us. Luke 24, 44 to 49. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So our reflection question is, how is this account of the ascension similar to the parallel one we just read in Acts 1? What does it add to create a richer picture of the event? So it's it's very similar, um, you know, what's, what is going on here. But Jesus gives them more information about how he came to fulfill the scriptures. He tells them about the Old Testament, um, what, how he fills that, those prophecies from the Old Testament, and that he is sending them as his witnesses um, to tell other people more about him. He also gives more detail about what's going to happen on Pentecost as well, although I wonder what they thought about being clothed in power and how that was what that actually was going to look like. Conclu our concluding verses from Luke 24. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was, I think it's he departed from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. So how does the emphasis in Luke 24, 50 to 53, help build on our understanding of the events from Acts 1, 9 to 11? What can we learn from the disciples about how we should understand the ascension? 
Well, the one thing that's very different here is they skip my favorite part, the standing and staring up into heaven part. They talk, he, Luke here emphasizes they, they went in joy and how joyful they were to go worship and go back to the temple and just be praising God for what they had seen. And I think that's what we can learn um, about how we should understand the ascension, that it is filled with joy. It gives us a promise and a hope for our future. And the, just joy is the best thing that we can have because of the ascension. So our final reflection today is explain why Jesus' ascension matters for both yourself and the life of the church. Why does it matter? Well, it matters because he's God and it proves to us that he's God. He's And he has done what he told us he's doing, that he's going back to the kingdom with his father to prepare a place for us to go someday um, when that time comes and how thankful we are and can be for that. Go ahead and finish up with prayer and whatever the needs that you have, um, whatever they happen to be. I'm going to ask you to pray for all the teachers and students uh, as we got in Minnesota anyway, got that finality of schools aren't going to be opening back up this year. Um, lots of anxiety and frustration around that. So, And then there are also some kids who are really doing well because of it. So um, some Thanksgiving for those kids who are really flourishing in this learning environment. And then also just some prayers for those of us who maybe aren't doing as well. I miss seeing all of you. Um, I hope you're all doing well. I know this is hard, uh, but I hope it's just going as well as it can for you. And you're maybe getting to spend a little bit more time in God's word as a result of having maybe some more time on your hands. Have a great week and I will be back next Sunday. See you then.